Hello, welcome to Tweed's Garage where today I'm going to attempt to make a new fuel sender head for my Riley. As you can see this is uh, the original made from pot metal and uh, it is just over the years, it's about 90 years old and with all pot metal eventually it starts to crack, swell and uh, all starts falling apart, see the sides have fallen off it and it's actually sort of changed in dimensions where it's cracked and swollen. So we're going to attempt to make a new one in aluminium. So, join me in that.
So this is the overhauled ripple sender unit and uh, really pleased how it turned out. Uh, we've got the new new top to replace the old pot metal top that has really served its time. Um, had to make a new output shaft because this one got damaged but as you saw in the video this is two pieces made from a bit of turned rod and a, and a brass plate soldered on the end and, and filed to shape whereas this one I made out of a solid, solid piece uh, made a new gimbal shaft for the other side made a new operating arm as I had the exact same flat bar in my metal stock and as this one was quite corroded thought I'd make a new one um, the bottom swivel assembly was all in good order although it, although it looked a bit corroded it all came apart so we gave it a clean and all the bearing surfaces were good so I've reused that um, and then the metal frame and the float operating rod um, just de-rusted them, cleaned them up as much as I could and then gave them a bit of chemical bluing for a bit of rust pre prevention um, yeah and the way it works is basically as the fuel level goes up and down the float goes up and down operating the lever arm at the top and uh, then on the output shaft you have this little drive coupling and then into that drive coupling you have these little universal ball joint type assemblies on this prop shaft that runs from there through a hole in the bulkhead and goes directly to the back of the back of the fuel gauge here and then literally that is directly connected to the fuel level needle on the front simple but effective so the next job to do is uh, it's a job I mean meaning to do but but didn't want to take the gauges out again but as I've got this out I thought I'd get the gauge out and replace the bezel glass because this got cracked accidentally I've done it up a little bit too tight and uh, this, this original bezel glass is really thin so I've got a new one which I've managed to find even though I tidied the workshop up so we'll go ahead and replace that So the problem I had originally that the glass was rattling around and all the other gauges have this kind of spacer in between the glass and um, I made made this one but you had to sort of gauge gauge the thickness of it um, but I got it a little bit too high and it was a bit too tight when I done the done the screws up and being being countersunk they uh, slightly pull in and uh, increase the tension on the glass and it just happened to break so you've got your little lens for your lamp light to come through there we go that's the original and you see that's quite that glass is quite thin compared to the new glass so clean the glass with 
methylated spirits. in securing ring then the clear perspex window for the light and then this uh, spacing ring which I've uh, taken a little bit off so it's not not so tight hopefully it won't break the glass this time sure it goes the right way because on the Riley 9 this sits above the uh, gauge lamp which is mounted behind the instrument panel and then shine, shines in there to light the gauge and then try and get all these back in without dropping them across the workshop floor never to be seen again Nearly got away. I won't go so gung ho with them this time. This is what happened: is the uh, because they weren't lined up properly, the countersink pulled it over tight, and then cracked the glass. There you go, nice and tight. It's gone together well this time. Put its bracket back on for safekeeping. Ready to go back on the car.